All right, hello, Fruitport High School AP Chemistry students. Another lesson coming at you. So in today's lesson, I want to talk about how we uh, transform an empirical formula into the more informative molecular formula. Remember from last lesson, our empirical formula is the ratio and lowest whole numbers possible comparing how many uh, atoms of elements are in a compound. Well, the molecular formula uh, takes us to a more informative because it tells you the exact same number, uh, the exact accurate number is what I should say. And I, I hope that today's lesson is a little bit easier, but we'll take a look at it, okay? So, if you remember, uh, you should have gotten this handout in class, and we focused on these steps, how to go from percent composition to empirical formula, and we had the, these four steps that came through here. And if you've been doing the lessons in order, hopefully you have that mastered, because we're going to combine it later. Today I want to start with doing this. How do we go from empirical formula to molecular formula? And I call these steps step A, step B, and step C, just so they're not confused with the renumbering the steps from the first one. The other thing that you should know to do this empirical formula to molecular formula work, you have to be given two things. So you have to be given one, the empirical formula, or maybe you are given information to find the empirical formula, and two, you have to get the molar mass of the molecular formula. Even though we don't know the molecular formula, we have ways in labs to get the relative molecular mass. And again, by the time the final exam comes, uh, there'll be other re ways we can do this, like using the mole road map or gas laws. We can find the molar mass in a different way. So the steps are pretty easy. Here, step A is to find the molar mass of the empirical formula. Remember, you'll be given that. Step B will to see how much bigger is the molecular formula's molar mass compared to the empirical. We'll do a little division, and that better equal a whole number. If you don't get a whole number, you did something wrong or I did something wrong with writing the question. So you should get 2 or 3 or 4. If you get 2.99, we know that's essentially 3. If, but if you get like a, like a 3.6 or a, a 2.5, something went wrong, we better check our work. And then we'll just take that number and multiply it by our empirical formula. Maybe we need it twice as big or three times as big or six times as big. So this probably will make a lot more sense after we do a sample problem. So let's see if I can keep this off to the side here. I'll zoom out and, uh, and do a practice problem. Okay. So our practice problem today will be this. Let's say that we're given an empirical formula uh, is we have predetermined or told that the formula is C4H, I'm sorry, C3H4O1, okay? And we also know that uh, the molar mass of the unknown molecular formula equals uh, 448, and if you need to remember Units for molar mass are grams per mole. Okay, how do I use this information given and this information given to get the uh, accurate molecular formula? Well, let's do the steps. Step one says to find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So step A, I'm going to do 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus, I'm just going to add 4, that's hydrogen 4 times, and an oxygen of 16. And just so I don't make an arithmetic mistake, I found that this equals 56 grams per mole. Okay. You should know how to find molar mass uh, very confidently right now by this point in our class. Okay. Step B, we are going to take the molar mass of the molecular formula and divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. In this case, that's 448 divided by 56. 448 divided by 56 turns out to be exactly 8. That's good because we want a whole number here. You might sometimes get it to equal exactly 1. In that case, the empirical formula equals the molecular formula. All right, and our third, final step, C, is we're going to take C3 
H4O, and we're going to make it eight times bigger. So three carbons eight times bigger, I think is 24 carbons. And four hydrogens eight times bigger is 32 hydrogens. And one oxygen eight times bigger is eight oxygens. So this is our final answer. This is the molecular formula. And we're done. Now, sometimes some students get to this point like, oh, black, we can reduce these. We can reduce this fraction. And if you were to reduce the fraction, you would go right back to where we started. But molecular formulas are exact numbers. These are not ionic compounds where we look to reduce formula units to a ratio. Uh, this is a really giant molecule that we have here. Okay. Now, that's nice that we have this uh, done, but to be honest, the hard challenge of the homework is going to be a question that incorporates all of this page. I'll give you percent composition, and you have to find the molecular formula doing these four steps and these three steps. So I'm thinking, let's end with one of those as a sample problem, and you can find more sample problems in your book if you require it. Okay. So, let's try this here, okay? So, let's say we knew something was 11% hydrogen, and we also knew it was 89% carbon. Those are the only two elements. We also happen to know that the molar mass of the molecular formula is 54 grams per mole. And so the question is, what is the actual formula of the compound? What is the molecular formula? Okay. So to do this, we are starting here with percent composition. We'll work through these steps, get the empirical formula. Then we'll have it, and we already know the molar mass where we can do these steps here. Okay. So uh, it'll be tough to squeeze it on this piece of paper, but we'll give it a try. So I like to keep my, or, my, my, all my hydrogens and carbons organized in lines. So first step is copy into grams, if you remember from last, 11, last lesson. 11 grams of hydrogen, 89 grams of carbon. How do we convert grams into moles? We divide by molar mass. So I'll divide by 1, which is 11 moles of hydrogen. I'll divide by 12. 89 divided by 12 on the calculator is 7.41 moles of carbon. And then I'm going to divide all moles by the smallest mole. So I'll divide by 7.41. The reason we're doing that is so we get this 1. And 11 divided by 7.41 is 1.48. 1.48 is not close enough to round to a whole number, but I see that 1.48 is really close to 1.5. So I'm now going to double all the numbers. 1.48 times 2 is essentially 3. 1 times 2 is 2. And so our empirical formula is H3C2. It looks a little funny that way because we normally write the carbon first and the hydrogen second. So, so if you were to write it as a C2H3, that, that's the same thing, of course. But in organic compounds, we have this. Now, this is just the empirical formula. We're only gone through half of the notes. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of move the paper here so we can, uh, we can see things. We're going to do these three steps in a different color marker to get the molecular formula. So I'm feeling the orange, all right? So how do I do the next step? Well, I want to find the molar mass of this. So the molar mass of this is 12 plus 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which, uh, let's see, do I have it written down? Nope, I don't. So I add it up, and I get 27 grams per mole. To do part B, I'll take the molecular formula, divide it by the empirical formula. We're talking about the molar masses. And let's see, oh, it's up here, 54, divided by the previously found 27. And I'm pretty sure that I could do that in my head, that that equals 2. So my final step is to take 
our C2H3 and double it. And if I take two carbons and double it, I get four carbons. And I take three hydrogens and uh, double it, we get six hydrogens. And this would be our final answer. Okay. There it is. And there's one more complexity that I'll make another video for, but this is how we would uh, work with percent compositions, empirical formulas, and molecular formulas. All right.